Hey y'all, Stan, stanhunter.com. Let's look at how I made carousel. I usually make these in a folder before I actually start kind of figuring it out. That's probably almost about a third of the work. Um, this is a picture I came up with uh, using Photoshop. Um, it's multiple pictures of animals that I made at Morgan's Wonderland. They've got a carousel there and I took my grandkid. see what happens. Now the good news is this doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to finish with oils. So I'm going to tape this off now. So to make sure I have a smooth edge under my tape, I put a layer of matte media on the edge. Okay, once that matte media is dry, I'm going to I'm going to start with just the white. Oh yeah, that's toned down quite a bit. So now I'm going to use this texture roller, and hopefully that will let, let some of the black show through. Oh yeah. I'm try going the other direction just for fun to see how much I can screw it up. All right, took, I took the tape off. This is what we got so far. So here is my Photoshop screen. Um, this is my image here. 160% printing size. I just about cover the canvas on this. I need to reverse this image. I'm going to cut a 36 inch piece of this. So this needs to be cut down to 13 inches. So it'll fit into my printer. So there's our two prints uh, together. So to make this easier, I made another picture of just eight and a half pieces that I stuck together with stuckot tape. On a transfer, the, the background will show through where there's no pigment transferred like all the way. The white will be showing the background through. I have to put white underneath the transfer. So I'm just trying to get the edges correct here and then I can go ahead and fill in the middle. So this seems to fit pretty well. I'm a little concerned that I still see some edges sticking up here that will show through the transfer. Painting the white on here actually helps with the sandy because that way I can see number one where the image is going to be, number two. I can also see when I sand down to the bottom layer. So now I've sanded this down so that the acrylic edges from the texture roller don't show through. So I need to put some more white on top and uh, then we're ready to transfer. This is actually gesso. The gesso kind of provides a good tooth for the transfer that sticks to. I get less defects. Even though the transfer may stick over the white in places, I can touch it up with my oil paint. Again, I don't want to paint the white out too far because um, it's, it's pretty unlikely when I put this whole transfer on here that it's going to actually match up perfectly. So in order to make this match up better with the white, I think I'm going to probably cut this into four pieces. Once I know where I want to put it, I kind of register uh, the piece with some tape on the edges. So I need to both uh, paint where the white is with uh, medium and I also need to put a quick coat on top of the transfer. You can kind of, this is starting in the middle and work the way to the sides. And I want to make sure that I don't put the, the, the paper towel that has media on it back on top of the transfer because I don't want to get media on top of this trans. I can use my fingers and make sure everything is pressed down firmly. Where it looks like maybe I didn't quite get enough media there and things aren't sticking, I can go back and add some more media. And I can take off my registration tapes. 
I'm definitely not quite on top of the white here on the giraffe's head, but uh, that's just the way it goes. Because of the weird edges on this and the alignment issues, I decided it might be better to just put this down in quarters. I won't have as much mismatch on the white paint. I made a variegated edge here where the two pieces are going to meet, uh, just so you don't see a, a smooth line. Um, that will mask the transition between the two pieces. Because I did this in quarters as a whole piece rather than as a roll, there's a risk that the alignment may not be as nice as it might have been if I just done a roll. Maybe someday I'll buy a $5,000 Epson printer. Not right now. Now I need to let this dry for at least a few hours. So once this transfer is dried for a few hours, or in this case overnight, I might just put water on top of it. This paper dissolves in water, so I don't have to really brush too much. I use a very soft brush uh, to push this off. I usually have to go over this two or three times to get the majority of the paper fibers off. And you won't be able to get all of the paper fibers off. Um, and you can tell when it dries, it'll turn a little bit of gray. When I put the gloss media on top of this to protect it, that will clear up a lot of the leftover fiber, so you won't notice it nearly as much. So you don't have to get all of the fibers off, but you should get off as much as you can. Because this beak is going off the white and on top of the black over here, I don't have a, a sharp beak edge there, and I'd have to paint that with my all paints. Even though this kind of saves some time on developing your image, you still have to do some painting afterwards, and it takes a now that I've brushed off the paper fibers, I'm going to go ahead and coat this with a coat of um, gloss media. And that will protect this layer. Also, this gloss media will soak into the fibers. It'll make this a little bit clearer. I'm going to push this down pretty good into the leftover fibers so it clears them up. And now I can go back and put a little streaking that kind of aligns with the picture some you will see the uh, brush strokes on this when it's finished. So here's the piece with the transfers. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put poles in here. So now I'm going to mark out the carousel poles. So now that this is marked out, go ahead and put tape at the edge. You always go around the side. So I'm going to start with some copper foil over these. And to do that, I'm going to start with matte media again and use that uh, glue on the copper foil. And you can put this down in little pieces if it's not perfect, because I'm going to paint over it. I usually press it down a little bit once I get it in place. you got to be careful not to move it one way or the other, because it will tear up the foil. Keep the paper on top of this when I put the foil down. And once you get it down, then you can take off the paper. Now that the matte media has dried, I'm going to cover this with a layer of gloss media. And I find that it helps to do this by kind of rolling the brush down rather than painting because that way I don't pull up the foil. And you can also use the brush to pick up foil around the edges. Put that on your paper towel. Particularly if there's extra foil on top, like a double layer, I can take off the top layer because there's no matte media underneath it. Once the gloss media is dry, I can pull up the tape. Now because these are supposed to be carousel poles, and so I'm going to use this pastel to put some black along the side using the scissors to knock off some of the pastel. Now I'm going to use a gloss media and I kind of use that to kind of push the black a little bit into the interior of the copper. Now you can see putting the gloss media on top of that pastel, you turn it into paint because pastel is basically a bunch of pigment. Now that the gloss media has dried on top of this pastel, I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off. It helps me put down a ruler here on the edge. It gives me a, a straighter line. Otherwise, sometimes the foil will tear on the edge. I'm going to have to retape this in order to put my textured gel on top. But I think it's worth it in order to preserve the edges on the foil. Once I've taken the tape off, I put in another layer of 
gloss media at least over the edges so I can kind of seal down these copper areas. So I've taped these poles a second time so that I can put some heavy gel on top of the pattern. This is my practice canvas so I tried out some different uh, patterns and how to make them work well. Um, I'm going to come up with this one I think works good where I have to go every other inch and kind of go back and forth. So, so I'm going to use some heavy gel and I'm going to use this comb that I broke in half and I'm going to just go back and forth and make lines in heavy gel. And I don't need too much on here. Now the nice thing about heavy gel is if you screw it up the first time, you can just put it down again, try over. I'm going to go with that. And I practice this a few times so I get the pattern right. And on these gels, you need to you need to take this tape off before it starts to harden on it. There's our three poles with the textured hard gel on top. And when that dries, it'll be clear. So I brought this inside now so I can start painting on it. I'm going to start with some acrylics first to cover up the white areas and then I'll put oil paint on top of everything to kind of bring out the brightness. So I've touched this up a little bit with acrylics now. It's ready to put oils on top. So here I painted oil on the top half of the picture and you can see the colors are a little bit brighter and it's more vibrant as well as touching up uh, little defects in the transfer. So this is almost finished. I'm having a hard time disguising the border between the two transfer. I mean, I wish I kind of sanded that off before I painted on top of it. I hang this on the wall with uh, photo lamps at about 30 to 45 degrees and an angle from both sides. Now I just need to take a picture of this, so I'm going to set up some photo lights. I usually set these at about 30 degrees. I use a tripod and a time delay for this so I can shoot it at about a quarter of a second exposure.